Hey there, it's Kat and this is Brews and Reviews. So today I'm going to be talking about my favourite books that I read in 2020. Uh, just a little disclaimer here, these are not going to feature my favourite series of 2020. I'm going to have a whole separate video for that because I read a number of series. In general, multiple books from the same series and I love them. So I wanted that to be a separate video. So there are books on here that you might expect to be on this list and they're not because they're featured in the other video. So definitely go and check that one out. Uh, well, when it comes up. But like, stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, you know, woo. <laughs> so let's talk about my favorite books from 2020. So I'm gonna start off with No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is a thriller about a woman who's driving home in the snow and ends up getting stuck at a truck stop with a few other people. She wanders outside to try and get cell service to call her dying mother and finds a little girl who has been locked in the back of a car, clearly been kidnapped. And then it sort of starts from there. There's a whole lot of things that happen and I just really enjoyed this one because it was kind of an edge of your seat thriller. This would be a fantastic movie if it ever got made into a movie. I found the main character made really, really relatable decisions. Like some of them were good, and I was like, oh yes, you've been really smart by doing that. And some of them were not good. There is some like gruesome things that happen in this. Obviously there is child abduction uh, and some just not very nice scenes because the kidnapper is present and nobody knows who that person is for a while. I, I just found it really good. It was a very edge of your seat thriller and I really enjoyed it. Next up, I want to talk about The Avant Guards by Carly Ustin. Uh, this is a graphic novel and it is about college basketball and a team that gets created and there are just so many fantastic characters in it. There is a trans character, a non-binary character, a character that suffers from anxiety, there are sapphic characters and I just just so cute. I just loved every interaction with them and I found myself just smiling all the way through and I definitely had this thing with like sports team books apparently where they're just a really cute found family thing and I don't know I just like it a lot. I liked it a lot and I want to read more of this and have more of these characters in my life because they were just great. Next on this list is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. So I totally read this out of season. I read it in like May and I probably should have saved it for December because it is a Christmas book, technically. Christmas land features, it's Christmassy. So this book is a horror about a guy that kidnaps children and takes them away to Christmas land. And I don't want to say anything else because I went into this book not knowing anything but Christmas vampires. And that was enough for me. It was a fantastic horror with some really creepy things that happened in it and I just had a great time so yeah. Next up we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I had such a fun time with this one. I read this with Victoria from What Victoria Read and it was just really fun. It was one of those books that I just didn't want to stop reading. I really enjoyed Harper who was one of the main characters. She lives with cerebral palsy and she just gets on with it which is great because we love that kind of disability representation. I also just like let's be real, still a sucker for Beauty and the Beast retellings. I know that like the market is absolutely flooded with them, but I love them all the same. Well, can I say? And I am really just dying for the third one to come out so that I can reread this one, read the sequel, and then read the third one and just be like, I have read this series. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this series, if it continues the way that this one goes, if it isn't on my 2021 series I loved. We will see. But yeah, this was a great book and I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, because how did I wait so long to read Muse of Nightmares? I read Strange the Dreamer back in 2019, which seems like such a different world at this point in time. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that was beautiful. and I loved it. And then I picked up Muse of Nightmares and it was equally as beautiful. The writing is just so lyrical and beautifully written. And I feel like it's a perfect exploration of grief and I want to say suffering because that sounds horrible that I, I really enjoyed reading this book about suffering but I just feel like the way that it is sort of described and the way that characters go through things and come out on the other side is so beautifully written. And I really enjoyed reading this duology. I feel like this was the perfect end to it and I just keep thinking about Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares and it just couldn't not be on this list so yeah I had a really good time with this one. 
sort of, in a weird way, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed reading this one. Next up, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now, this one I think I gave 4 out of 5 stars, but I really feel like it needed to be on this list because I just, like, I keep thinking about it again. I think that is a marker for my favourite books of the year, is that I just keep thinking about them. And I really, really want more from this book. So this book is about a girl called Alex Stone who goes to Yale to be part of the Ninth House, which is a uh, secret society and the ninth house is to make sure that the other houses aren't doing anything that they shouldn't be doing. It is pretty grim, there are uh, like a lot of trigger warnings for this book, there is rape, there is underage rape, uh, there is death and murder a lot and drug use, so I mean maybe just take a look at the trigger warnings before you pick this one up if you think you'll be affected by them, but I really enjoyed this book and I keep thinking about it and I want a sequel now, please. Next on this list is Get A Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is about a woman called Chloe who has a near brush with death and decides to make a list to get a life. Chloe is chronically ill and has fibromyalgia and this book is like a fun contemporary romance in which she gets involved with the superintendent of her building who is very cute and also a domestic abuse survivor. So I feel like that was really interesting to have a chronically ill protagonist and a male survivor of domestic abuse and like I just feel like it was really well dealt with and I really enjoyed the portrayal and how they actually communicated with each other like it's bad when communication being there is a thing that I'm like yay happy romance because so often in a lot of the romances that I've read it's absent and I just I really liked it. I really enjoyed the depiction of Chloe's uh, chronic illness and how she sort of communicates with people and deals with people and yeah I just I just really liked it. It was a really good book. Next on this list is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. So this book is about a girl who dreams of going to school to study stem cells um, so she wants to go to medical school but she doesn't have enough money to go and she realizes that after not getting her scholarship the only thing that she can do to get that money is to win prom queen because there is a scholarship attached to this and it's really cute. There is a sapphic romance in this that I just found them adorable. It was a very enjoyable book and I think that the hard-hitting moments hit you hard and the cute moments hit you in like a cute way and I just had a lot of fun with this one. Next up we have Summer Night by Jim Butcher. This is the fourth book in the Dresden Files. I mean I could have included a few of the books from the Dresden Files but I wanted to include this one because it was predominantly about the Fae and I mean go figure. I just had a lot of fun with it. I feel like this is a running theme with all of the books on this list is that I had a lot of fun with them but this one in particular I liked the different fairy courts. I liked how uh, Harry Dresden had to deal with them and I liked the, the big thing that happened at the end. I thought that was great and just had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I, I don't know what more I can say about that one it's just I had a lot of fun. If you were doing shots to this video and doing them to the number of times that I say I had a lot of fun, I'm sorry, you probably passed out about five minutes ago. Sorry. Then we have Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. So this book is post-apocalypse and it's set on a Navajo reservation where there's a big wall around it because everywhere else flooded and now there are monsters attacking the reservation. And the main character has worked with some of the Navajo gods in the past, in the present, sort of they're around and it was just really interesting. At first I wasn't really sure what I made of this book and I was like oh you know it's a bit slow or predictable or something like that and then I got to about halfway and then I really enjoyed it and I keep thinking about it and I was like actually this book was really really good and I had a lot of fun with it. Sorry to say that again but I did and I keep thinking about it and I'm like I really want to reread this and then read the sequel so I can just be in this world with these characters and you know it was a good time. So the last book on this list is the one I read most recently and that was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So I read this book as a buddy read with Emily from Novan Levels and Anne from Andrew with an E and uh, it was just fun. That is so cute. Uh, it's about the President of the United States son falling in love with the uh, Queen of England's son and at first like they hate each other and then they slowly love each other so it's enemies to lovers and the banter is great and the characters or the personalities are just so cute. I love them so much and there were moments in this that made me cry and moments in this that made me laugh and it was a very 
poignant book. So yeah, those are the books that I really enjoyed reading in 2020. They didn't all come out in 2020. I don't... did any of them come out in 2020? Maybe one or two of them, but the majority didn't. These are the books that I read and really enjoyed. Again, I will say that my favourite series are going to be in a different video, so if you didn't see something that you expected to see in this video, you'll probably see it in that video. Anyway, what books were your favourites of 2020? If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!